Here we are, playing more Silent Hunter 3. Well, not yet. Let's boot up uh, Silent Hunter 3 Commander, get the uh, screens all situated here. So there we see our redoubtable captain, Kurt Dirkfall. Uh, let's, you know, let's just go ahead and hit up the nightclub. Why not? Welcome back, Kurt Dirkfall. It is always good to see you. Can you believe Preen? He went into Scapa and sank the Royal Oak. First bugger to get the Knight's Cross. Next there will be a book. Ha. Watch for mines around the English Channel. I recommend you avoid the area completely. Well, yeah. You've just made it so that I really want to go there at this point. Uh, it's just how my brain works. And then the Graf Spee sank four more merchant ships in the South Atlantic last month. It was one of the uh, German commerce raiders that uh, set sail and raised all kinds of havoc. And I thought I'd be sailing from Willemthaven. I ended up in Kiel. I wonder if that's just a joke for players, because uh, most players don't like to start in Kiel because it takes forever to get through the canal. Hell V Vrath. Oh, Hell Wrath, because it's a V and then another V. It's a double V. Hi ho! Welcome. Um, so let's, uh,. See if there's anything I should really do here. Do I need to replace anybody? Rename anybody? Oscar Schindel. You need to be renamed. You will be named. Just look and see if there's anybody else that's needing to be renamed. And uh, I'm naming this guy Delonian. He, uh, I don't know if he's here, I don't see him, but uh, he asked, well I don't th think he actually asked. He subscribed uh, to the Hitbox channel though, so I feel like this is one small token of thanks that I can offer to him. Um, there are actually a few people who uh, subscribed here on Hitbox, and I, I didn't know that uh, that would happen. So I, I kind of am just ad hoc doing this for those people who subscribe. Um, on here. I mean, that's not to say that you will guaranteed get a spawn on the crew if you subscribe, because there are uh, quite a few more folks who are going to be on the list, but it's 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 a start. I figure that this is a good thing to do. So, there you go. Uh, has anyone been booted out for being drunk or whatever? Yes, actually. A thing. Um, the current person that I just renamed uh, was added to the crew to replace somebody who was um, kicked off the boat because they were arrested by the police for being drunk. So there you go. Uh, let's check one thing real quick. Yeah, we've got crew transfers on. So we're gonna launch the game and it may kick someone off. So let's see. Nope, didn't do it. That's okay. There we go. Alright, so let's get the career loaded. Let's move the window a bit too. Alright. That's not me. Note the career named Fart Barf. Stunning. What? What unplugged? Hello? <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't my mic. Oh, it looks like it's still... <laughs> Everything's still working. I don't know what that was that uh, decided to go kaput. Let me just try typing in the chat. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Uh, well... Pay no attention to those random technical noises. Let's load up the career. Patrol number five. Yes. Okay, so it's November 23rd. Let's load up our U-boat to start with. I like... You know what? Should I go with all type twos? I think I'm going to go with all type twos. Uh, Luke, that is the... Uh, 2015 edition of Living Silent Hunter 3, which is the latest, newest super mod that just hit the streets. Hit the streets. <laughs> what is he, like in a 1950s street gang? We're gonna hit the street. We're gonna give him a real piece of our mind. See? Uh, let's get some torpedoes loaded. I'm gonna go with all type 2s. Just uh, to see if that does anything interesting for us. I don't know. The same, no change. What are you talking about? Oh. There you go. And then maybe next time I'll do type uh, type 1s. Uh, let's also... We have an upgrade, don't we? Yeah, we have an upgrade for batteries. That's going to put us in port for a little while. I think. 
Well, Luke, if you got it on Steam, I unfortunately can't really help you because I don't know how to install that particular mod on the Steam install. There's some kind of... It's complicated. Silent Hunter 3 is sometimes resistant to modding, uh, and I, I don't really know how else to uh, describe it. Poonyu7 just subscribed, by the way. Thank you, sir. Much obliged. I appreciate that. Um, so as far as Decknect is asking if increasing the range will even help because of my O2, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I will probably be bottlenecked by oxygen as far as cruising underwater. The thing is, though, is that if I need to go ahead flank underwater, it would probably help because when I'm going that fast, the limiting factor is going to be my battery more so than my oxygen. That that's that's uh, that's my hunch anyway. I still need to do a uh, side emblem. I only have this one and I don't really care to use it. So, anyways, um, I think that's all we need to do while we're here in port. I can admire my medals that I earned for some reason. I don't know why I got the German cross in the preceding patrol, but whatever. Uh, where am I on the ace list? I'm rather far up there for being in a type 2 particularly. I am number 5. <laughs> Way to go. Patris would be a good emblem. That would be pretty awesome, actually. Uh, be agitating English convoys. Crew management. Let's let's take a look at that. Are we full up? We are full up. Perfect. Um, that can stay like that, actually. These. Oh wait, 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 wait. Qualifications. We need to give someone a qualification. That's exactly why I was up here. So. Oh. Well, that's a bit of a pisser. Uh, lethal needs to be made a machinist again for some reason. Unfortunately, yeah, that's... I'll have to fix that again. I thought that I fixed that already, but apparently not. Well, that's too bad. Uh, right. I can not give out anything else, because I did terrible last patrol. Uh, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, our mission today is actually to... Uh, sail to lock you, which is what we intended to do last time, but we got distracted and made a kind of ho-hum attack on a convoy. Did okay, but not great. So uh, we're actually going to be setting out for what I initially intended us to do, which is to sail right into the middle of lock you, which was kind of the convoy staging area for the British, and just see what kind of mayhem we can stir up. Maybe run into some planes, we'll see. I'm actually using punch cards. deck necked. That reminds me, I um, I don't know if any of you watched my video of Lewis and Clark stayed home, but um, I recently got a comment from uh, a gentleman on that video, and his name is Philip Bouchard, and I'll give you a minute to figure out who that might be. You probably won't know who that is, actually. Um... Philip Bouchard is the guy that made that game. Yeah. And um, not only did he make that game, he made, along with a few other people, of course, he made Oregon Trail for the uh, Apple II. I didn't know that he was actually the creator of uh, Oregon Trail. So uh, he and I had a, a little bit of an email conversation, and... Um, He's a, first of all, a pretty fascinating guy. Uh, just his his history in terms of game development. Um, oh, don't worry about it, Mars. Water under the bridge. Um, let's get back into the game. And I'll tell you, I'll start telling you a little bit more about Phil. <laughs> On a casual first name basis with him. Yeah, he was uh, with MECC. Alright, let's see. Oh, you're you're going you're going back to your fucking there. Yes, excellent. <laughs> what are we pointed at here? Oh, okay, just just the ocean. I thought that <laughs> I thought that there was a gate here. I'm paranoid about gates in this harbor. So yeah, he was with um, MECC and uh, developed Oregon Trail uh, using. 
assembly language, first of all, which is amazing. Uh, he actually developed the... It's, it's kind of interesting. He has written a book about uh, his experiences with MECC. <laughs> and it's called uh, You Have Died of Dysentery. And it's actually on his website, so I really encourage you to check that out. I'll probably uh, tweet a link to it or something like that. It, it's really cool, though. Um, it, it's very technical. It's not like a, a super narrative, super florid prose kind of a thing. But it, it's like a technical uh, recounting, I guess, of how that game was made, about how Oregon Trail was made, and about just kind of the development process that went into making a lot of the educational games in the 80s. It's, it's pretty neat. But yeah, he's a he's a cool dude. He um, he doesn't work in games anymore. Uh, I asked him, well, why why aren't there more educational games? And he said, I think he basically said, let me see if I can actually get the email up. That would probably be beneficial, and I can just tell you what he said. Oh yeah, Robert. You know what? Tell you what. Um, once we get out of the harbor, maybe I'll start posting links and stuff. That sound good? Alright, let's see. Come on, come on. Yeah, so he gave me a very detailed answer that was very, very interesting as far as why we don't have edutainment so much anymore. And so he says, way back in the mid to late 1990s, the educational game industry suffered a near-complete collapse, and it never really recovered. There were many factors in this collapse, including the following. A. Schools decided that they preferred to invest their money in computer software that could be used in the classroom year-round, such as tools such as word processing and generic skill building products. Historical simulations are especially inappropriate because they are usually tied to a topic that appears for a single week in the school curriculum. B. Parents stopped buying educational software for middle school and upper elementary aged kids. The only two categories that remained viable in the home market were early learning software and SAT preparation software. And C. As the internet became hot in the late 1990s, many people came to expect everything to be available on the internet for free. Many people began to balk at paying for anything. <laughs> As a result, the late 1990s was a complete bloodbath. Virtually every company in the industry went bankrupt. So that is when I changed careers. And yeah, that's that's wonderful. I, I have wondered that for a long time, and obviously I didn't ask anybody. <laughs> but uh, that that would be why. Yeah, actually, um, if you Google his name, R. Philip Bouchard, um, he actually has, I think, made the book public. He let me look at it. It was only like a week prior to it um, being fully released on his site, but, uh, but yeah, he seems like a really cool dude. Definitely worth a look at that book, though, because I, I was I've gotten to the point I'm trying to remember I had to started listening to a podcast on my way into work, so I stopped reading it, but um, I'm trying to remember. I was past the point where he was talking about the original Oregon Trail, which was a very simplistic, it was really just arithmetic kind of thing, where the game would randomly deduct like points away from your food total or your clothes or whatever based on random events, essentially. Uh, Glimner, it's called, uh, You Have Died of Dysentery. If you actually just punch that into Google, I'm sure that'll bring it up. And it's entirely free online, so check it out. He says that he also, uh, doesn't play very many games anymore. He, uh, mostly plays, uh... He says that some of the new European style board games that have become popular, so I'm assuming he means like Catan and things like that. Okay, so we're coming up to the gate. I should probably stop talking about uh, Philip Bouchard. Cool though he may be. Uh, 
and focus on matters at hand. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Große Fahrt zurück. That'll Ruder, do. Null, Grad. But yeah, I should share some of the results of my little... It was kind of an interview in a way. I don't... I didn't really ask him if I could post stuff. So maybe I should come back to him and say, Hey, you know, people are interested in what you do and everything. Uh, I could put it up on my disused blog. <laughs> so that people can actually uh, hear a little bit more about it. We're just going to hang out here at the gate. I do, but I haven't updated it in t at least two years, a thing. There's no reason that you would know about it. <laughs> I find sometimes I just, well, I find oftentimes, which is why I haven't updated it in two years, that I don't have the uh, desire to write. I used to be a pretty active writer. Mark4810, welcome! Um, you have missed me rambling about uh, Philip Bouchard, <laughs> the creator of Oregon Trail, and uh, we're just getting started going through the gate. Well, Robert, I think MECC was bought, wasn't it? Pretty sure. Um, I don't remember by whom, but... Let's take a look. I'm trying to keep my eye on the screen, on two screens at once, it's just very difficult for me with my limited brain power. Um, no, actually, I, I think that they, well, I'm not sure. It's certainly going to be in his book. I'd be surprised if it weren't. Anyways, I wait for the fucking gate. There we go. Thank you, time compression. It looks like a lot of... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah. They um, were bought out by SoftKey. <laughs> it is one slow gate. Come on. Farewell, Wilmshaven. We shall return triumphant. Ooh, that's a battleship over there. Not, uh, it's not, you know, one that I can sink, really. I want to take a look at it once I, uh... Get through this fucking... Lock, I guess it is. anyways yeah did I actually load yep I did I do have type 2 torpedoes I'm gonna go take a look at that uh, battleship it's not the turpits is it it's what would that be It's over here somewhere. That's it. That's the battleship. No. Uh, where is it? Oh, shit. Where am I, first of all? Oh. Wait, no. That's behind me. <laughs> I'll look once I get through the lock. How about that?
Okay, it's not opening. <laughs> uh, 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 fun times. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's get going. I would love to sink a carrier Mars. If that opportunity uh, presents itself, I will absolutely take it. But um, really, I'm probably more likely to sink... Well, I won't want to say sink nothing, but um, <laughs> sink something a little bit smaller. So let's see. We have some ships over here. Where was that? I can use the little uh, dot camera here. And that would be it. And it's actually underway. Well, we'll take a look here in a minute. Actually, we're ready to go because I've got a horse plotted. Yeah, it's over here. Isn't it? No. Where did I see that? No, it's right here. Yeah. He's big. No, I don't think it's the Bismarck. The Bismarck has a particular paint pattern. It could be before it was painted, I guess. I don't know if the game simulates that or not. Anywho. Yeah, what's he doing there? He's dancing around. Um, big shit for big people. <laughs> Those Bismarck sailors, they love their Bismarcks. Delicious donuts. Alright. I'm actually tempted to look at my... My ID book, even though it's... Not really... Germane to our purposes. Okay, so I'm gonna go way over the top here. I'm just gonna kinda stab south, like that. And that's luck you. So, we're going to have a heck of a journey ahead of us. Yeah, Robert. I don't know if that's going to be in this, though, because I think Living Silent Hunter 3, by default, redacts the um, swastikas. So, I don't think that that's actually going to show up. Um, GWX has it, but... Yeah, and it's also the Bismarck as well as the Turpets have these Dazzle patterns painted on them. It's probably the Kneisenal. I don't know how to say that. Oh, wait, maybe it's the Scharnhorst. Either way, it's a ship that we can't sink, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Could be a hipper class, yeah. One of the pocket battleships, that would make sense. See, I'm not very good at identifying German ships because I can't sink them. <laughs> so I don't really care about them. <laughs> also because I'm kind of a dumbass anyways, it's another reason I can't identify them. 